using a power app for the person who's taking the notes and then sharing that information with others easily through reporting. And here, for example, using Flow, we're gonna actually capture items and then share those out to others within the organization to produce for us simplified reports that look similar to this report here that we can go ahead and share that information easily or this information here. So stay tuned, we're gonna jump right to this. So the first place we start really, and we're not gonna go over that in this video, it's the first place we start really is um, developing the application to input the information. And you can see this application actually is pretty old. I've used it for a long time. It's very steady and consistent for me. So you can use pretty much anything. You could also use a form to input this information. But the information eventually lands in SharePoint. So this is a SharePoint list that we're, we're creating here. So however you get the information into SharePoint, of course, view other videos on how to create this Meeting Notes app. There's several of them on the, on the channel. But ultimately, it's going to land inside of SharePoint. Now, once that data is inside of SharePoint, as you can see here, it just lists it out into these columns. And <clears throat> although you can't see all the information, because some of it's been blanked out to protect uh, personal information, but you can get the idea, right? All the information eventually dumps into this SharePoint list. Now, you have a couple options here. One, you can share this list with others here and have them come into it. Or you can just make it even easier on them so they don't have to remember where the URL is and actually send them an email. And that's really what we're going to talk about today is how do we take this information in SharePoint and send an email message. And to do that, we're going to need to look at Flow or Power Automate. So we're gonna look at two examples here in Power Automate. Both of them are very similar and I'll show you a few shortcuts along the way. So the first thing that we wanna do is create a flow that is based on a reoccurrence. So I, you can create this as an instant flow if you want, but I do it reoccurring every Sunday at 10 a.m. That's what I do. And to do that, you're gonna to wanna to set up that flow from originally right within Power Automate. And to do that, you're just gonna click on Create here. I'm gonna open this up in a different tab for us. And you're gonna say right here, Scheduled Cloud Flow. And then you're gonna give it a name. And when you give it a name, it's gonna pop you right into here with a reoccurrence. And, and you saw on that last screen here where we could create the actual date and when it's gonna run and the frequency, but once it gets in here, you can just hit edit and change that by clicking on that down arrow there. And remember, here we have the days, we just select the days that we want and the time that we want it sent and the frequency, very simple. The next thing we need to do is add the get item. So remember, we, t we spoke of this information coming from a SharePoint list. So we need to add that address and as you can see there, the address is on the screen and then you need to find whatever the name of that list is. And it's really simple. One, you know, you, you put in the address, you put in the list. And so pretty easy. Now there are a couple things in here that are a little bit different that I wanted to bring to your attention. First of all, is this order by. Order by is the name. This is the name actually in the column in SharePoint. So there's a name column called name <laughs> and it is ascending. So I want all of the names to be alphabetized in an ascending order. And that's how you do that. Name ASC. If, if it's descending, then if I wanted this to be descending, I would type in DEC, kind of like the abbreviation for description. Okay, but I want to keep it there. The other thing I wanted to bring your attention to here is top count. Now, I'm going to show you this as an example inside the other one. Well, let's just flip over there right now. Notice the top count here is 600. 
And the reason why is because I have 523 records. It will default at 100. So you need to modify this if you want to get more than 100. This is a frustration point for people. This is how you do it. Change that right there. Now, let's go ahead and look at this flow here. And I'm going to show you just a little bit of a different approach. Notice here, this one is by meeting date. This is that second email that's being sent out. I'm organizing this one by meeting date in a descending manner. So I want the most current meeting date at the top of the email. And I only want the last 10 meetings. So I can adjust that to be one if I wanted to just for the current, but I give 10. So you can do that however you want, but just to show you the example between 600 and 100, excuse me, 610. All right, let's go ahead and look at the create the HTML table. So to create the HTML table, you're gonna add this as a component. Remember, a step, an action. And so here you're just gonna click on add action and you're just gonna type in create an HTML table, right? And I can just go down there and find it. Okay, um, which is right in here. Trust me, we're using it. So where is it now? Oh, you know what? I think it's not create a, I think it's create HTML. Yeah, that's what it is right there. So create HTML table. So just go ahead and click on that. You're gonna add that here. And this is what it'll come up. And then we're gonna use value. Notice here it's SharePoint, right? So here it is right here, list of items, value. That's the items we're getting from this get items. So everything that we collect here, we're listing here, right? We wanna pull from that list. And then you see all of that information there. And then we just wanna put in the columns. Instead of automatic, we're gonna say custom. And with custom, we're gonna put, we're gonna put in our headers and then the fields that correspond with those headers. And sometimes you have to play with this a little bit uh, to get the right to make sure you get the right dynamic content in there. Um, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. Okay, that's all you do there. Now we're gonna need to compose the HTML code. Now this is probably the trickiest part. So you may wanna pause the video and just copy this down and put it into yours. But we're gonna create right here a compose. So again, we're gonna add an action and we're gonna type in compose. Okay, and it's a data connector right there. Okay, and then you're gonna type in that. Now I put in parentheses there, the um, HTML code. It's just something I do just to help me remind, but I, this is the name of the action right here, Compose. I leave that in there so when I do these videos, you can see that. Okay, the last step that we need to do is send the email. <clears throat> now, when it comes to sending the email, we're going to enter in addresses and I have addresses in there, although they're blanked out um, to protect uh, the individuals. But essentially, you just type in their email address with a semicolon after it. So what I do is I open up Outlook, I type in their their email, it pops up and then I just copy their email, drop it in here, put a semicolon and drop the next one in. It, very simple and straightforward. So. That's what you kind of want to do to do your email of the two box. And they don't have to be members of your domain. They don't have to be members of anything. This is all external. Then we're going to just put in uh, the subject. Now the subject in this point, I put speaker summary as of, and then I wrote the date here. Now this is an expression. I could just put in UTC now, but if I put in UTC now, it's going to have the little, the date and then the T, it's gonna give the time, it's kinda of ugly. So use this format date time, put UTC now, right here, you see it there. And then this is the format I want, day, month, year, okay? And then you just hit that in there, so that's pretty simple. And then here we're just gonna write, this is a message that's gonna appear at the top of the email message. And then these are the outputs. Now the first output, notice as I highlight that it says, Compose HTML code, that one right there. The next output is the table itself. So the first thing I want to do is use this, the way I've got this right here, 
right? The way the HTML goes and then use this output. Okay. And that is about it. Now I found, I can't remember the reference off the top of my head of where I found the HTML code, but you can search the internet and find it. There's, I'm convinced there's very few original thoughts anymore, right? Because we share so much with everybody, but, but you can find that code out there or again, just pause the video and copy it from my screen here. Make sure you get everything right though, because uh, it's very important. Once you get done with that, then you just, I usually test at least once, hit save, and now you're good to go. The same thing with the second flow, the only difference that we did, so I copied, so when I got done with the first one, you can go out to your flows here, and what I usually do is I click on the three dots, I say save as, and I save it as the new one. And when you save it, it's not on. So when you save it, you wanna make sure that this is turned on, right? You'll see, it'll say turn on. You don't want it to say turn off, okay? So that's because when you're in there and you're editing the flow that um, you can test it and things of that nature. If it's turned off, you'll get an error and you have to go back out and do that. The other thing I did was, notice here it says send email with a 2, V2, 2. Yet when I go here, V2. I didn't want to copy all those email addresses over again. So all I did was I hit copy here, copy to my clipboard. And then I went over to this one here. And I just said paste in. So I'll show you how that works. Add action. Go right here to my clipboard. And see it right there now I've already added it so it doesn't want to add it again but um, that's all you do it'll highlight here you click on it and boom it automatically pastes it in and then I just changed some of the uh, content in the email itself so pretty simple pretty easy to do and that should get you from your SharePoint list out and again we we're using a front end as a power app for this but this could be uh, power it could be a form that you're using. It could be people entering data directly into SharePoint. It could be any any number of ways to get the data into that SharePoint list.